Alright everybody, today I felt like doing a Kobe video. Not a Cody video, not a Corey video, but a good old-fashioned Kobe video. Is Kobe even a name? I don't even know if that's an actual name that people have. I've never met anybody named Kobe, but it... It sounds like one that could be the case, right? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Well, anyway, I uh, I know there's a lot of stuff else going on in One Piece right now, but uh, the volume cover for Tonkoban number 107 was just revealed. Uh, it's released November 2nd in Japan, so it's coming up next week, uh, or the week after that, I should say. But, oh my god, look at this, right? Look how much hype Oda crammed into this one volume cover. You got Garp in the background like, ah, move on, young ones, to the next stage, the next Next era is upon us. You got Prince Cruz, you got Kujaku, you got Helmeppo, you got Hibari there with her sniper rifle. By the way, Hibari uses a sniper rifle. That's pretty badass, am I right? You got Kobe, you got Luffy on there, you got Sabo there, you got uh, Cobra. Oh, Cobra! Maybe Kobe is short for Cobra. Did anybody ever think of that? Who knows, right? It's just like, yes, Kobe becomes the next king of Alabasta. Didn't see that twist, did ya? Actually, Okay, I mean, like, you know, Vivi and Kobe getting together, they're the same age. That actually kind of works. I'm shipping Kobe hard with Hibari right now, but Vivi, Kobe, leave that on the table. That might happen. <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right, all right. So anyway, yeah, um, I've already made a lot of videos about Kobe, but a lot of them follow a very similar theme. At some point, whenever I do a Kobe video, I mention, hey, you know, we could have a side story or a Gaiden or even like a, a manga after One Piece is like a side manga where we follow Kobe's journey because Kobe's journey is very similar to Luffy's right now. Kobe's kind of the protagonist of his own little marine adventure, just like Luffy is the protagonist of his pirate adventure, right? So I always bring that up and I always mention like, oh, maybe we could have a little arc like this or a little arc like that, you know, in Kobe's own little manga. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to sit down and write it out. I'm just going to be like, okay, if I was tasked with the job of writing a manga that ran like concurrently with the One Piece plot. Okay, so while Luffy is getting the Straw Hats together and going through the East Blue and then into the Grand Line and then doing everything like that, like Alabasta, what is Kobe doing at the same time? I'm like, okay, I will do that. I will sit down and I will figure this out. And I wrote it down. Now, uh, apologies if you saw the title of this video or the thumbnail and you're like, Kobe got his own manga? No. I mean, yeah, kind of. If you just uh, consider whatever my crazy crack fic is to be canon, I, I mean, like, I do, so, you know, you could too if you wanted to. But, you know, this is important. We're discussing this now because One Piece is going to end eventually, probably sometime before the heat death of the universe, but who knows. And when that happens, there's going to be a lot of other properties and things that are going to branch out from it, you know, a la Boruto, you know, from Naruto, but, you know, may maybe not, like, so direct. You know, we're just going to follow Luffy's kid or something like that. I would I would like it to explore other characters, right? But anyway, here we go. You guys ready for my version of the Kobe manga? I, I don't know if you are. I don't even know if I am. I just basically jotted all this stuff down as soon as I woke up this morning. So we're, we'll see where this goes. All right. So the Kobe manga. We are going to start off with a very brief narration of Kobe's life. And it's very uneventful, okay? So we're basically going to have Kobe narrating this. I'm going to take a lot of cues from My Hero Academia for a minute because, honestly, it kind of sinks up. We'll, we'll see where that goes. They have basically like a school training marine arc later. It, it just We'll see what happens, okay? But Kobe's going to talk about, like, Hey, guys, how you doing? I'm Kobe. Uh, we'll find out his last name, but I don't think it's going to be relevant. He's not part of some famous family or something. My name is Kobe Figarland, and I was born in the West Blue. <laughs> like, no, it's not, not going to be anything like that. Just like, my name is Kobe. I grew up in this little fishing village in the east. Here are my parents. Or rather, because this is One Piece, we could say his parents are dead, which they probably are, because you feel like as soon as he got away from Alveda, you feel like he would want to go back to his family. So his Kobe's parents are dead. Be like, yeah, my, my parents died 
I was just kind of living on my own, you know, like any kind of shonen protagonist does. And then one day when I was 14 years old, I went to go uh, fish like I normally do and uh, ended up accidentally boarding Alvita's vessel. Uh, since this is the first chapter of the Kobe manga, it could be a little longer than normal. So we're going to focus on like Kobe actually like the event of Kobe stepping on Alvita's crew and Alvita discovering him. And then the pirate crew like ready to like tear him apart and like it's like, ah, Seems like we got a little stowaway here. What do you want to do, Captain Alvita? We want to chop him up and eat him for dinner. Yarg! He's like, oh, we'd throw him overboard. You know, we can't afford to feed this little brat. And then Kobe, meanwhile, he's on the ground, like, just bawling his eyes out. Like, oh, please, I don't want to die. Please. I just wanted to catch some fish. Like, we're going to see Kobe really, really pathetic here, guys. We're going to start this off on Chapter 1. Kobe is going to be a mess, all right? He's going to be very very traumatized, okay? And then Alvita's gonna come out, and Alvita's gonna be like, well, you know what? Alvita's gonna give him the test. Alvita's gonna say, who is the most beautiful pirate in all of the four blues in the Grand Line? And, of course, Kobe's gonna be like, That's, you are! You're incredible! You're amazing! I love you! Just, please don't hurt me! And then Alvita's like, damn straight I am! Okay, you could stay on my ship. I need a new whipping boy. My last one didn't... He broke a little too early. You're gonna be the new one and just like okay i guess i don't know it's like now wash the dishes okay you know <laughs> kobe's gonna go with that we're gonna have a few maybe a little bit of a time skip because he was on alvita's ship for two years guys he was 14 when he accidentally walked on the ship and then he was 16 when luffy shows up okay so we're, we're gonna have a little bit of a montage of kobe's just pirate adventures and and it's really honestly gonna focus on this this is where he becomes you know hateful of pirates. Maybe beforehand, he didn't really have a strong opinion of most worldly things. He didn't really care about, you know, maybe necessarily pirates, revolutionaries, Yonko, or anything like that. He's just living in a little fishing village or whatever, right? We don't actually know. Was, was it always Kobe's dream to be a Marine ever since he was a little kid? Or was it Kobe staying on Alvita's ship and learning to hate pirates so much that he kind of got drawn toward the idea of the Marines? Because every single night, Kobe was, like, going to bed in the, in the you know, the lower parts of Alvita's Vita's ship, you know, she probably just gave him, like, a, the, the ship equivalent of the closet under the stairs to sleep in, right? And so he's there in this little, little box, basically, like, this three-foot by three-foot room that he has to, like, cramp up to. He's like, I just, I want the Marines to find me someday, and they're gonna save me, and they're gonna take me away from all this. And, and maybe that's when Kobe started to develop, like, you know, I just wanna, I wanna join the Marines. If I could get out of here, first thing I'm doing, man, is I'm joining the Marines, and I'm gonna make sure that nobody else has to deal with this pirate crap anymore, right? So we'll have some montages there for two years as Kobe is just abused by Alvita and the uh, rest of her crew and he's there as just the cabin boy to swab the decks okay and just carry everybody's stuff and clean up all of the the plates and do the dishes every night and just like he he barely sleeps in this little tiny little little cubby hole he's in and he's just like I just want to get out of here right so then two years later that's when Luffy shows up now remember in the One Piece manga proper this is all one story arc like romance Dawn encompasses the Fuchsia Village flashback, Luffy heading out to sea, Goat Island where he meets Kobe, and then um, uh, Shell's Town. That is all one arc in this. In this, though, the Kobe manga, there'll be like individual arcs. So like this is actually, honestly, this the first chapter can just be all of uh, Kobe's backstory, meeting Alvita, the two years, and then Luffy showing up and then punching out Alvita. That'll be the first chapter. Okay, the first chapter will end with Kobe and Luffy heading out to sea, and, and Luffy's there like, I'm gonna, you know, be king of the pirates and find somebody to join my crew, and Kobe's, but it's from Kobe's perspective. Kobe's the one narrating it like, that was the day I met Monkey D. Luffy, and little did I know, this man with a straw hat would change my life forever, you know? And then they sail away, and then that's the end of, of Kobe's romance dawn, as it were, okay? That's the end of his chapter one, all right? So then, we have the Shell's Town arc, okay? Uh, now... Once again, it's going to play out exactly the same, except just from Kobe's perspective here, okay? So Luffy's still there, but he's more of the sidekick. He's more of the supporting character, okay? This is all from Kobe's perspective. It's just like, man, this guy with the straw hat, he's really weird. I don't know about him. He says he's a pirate, and I've, I've, I've been with pirates for the last two years, and he doesn't look like any pirate I've ever seen. He seems like a nice guy. He punched out Alvita, so that was cool. And now he's trying to look for pirate hunter Zoro. This is crazy, but now we're in a Marine base. Maybe I have a chance to actually finally join the Marines and everything, right? 
right? And so they meet Helmeppo, and, you know, Helmeppo holds Kobe at hammer gun point and everything. That still happens. All that, all that still happens. It's the same story. It's the same plot line, right? So that, that's pretty much going to be the same. But we're going to extend the Shellstown arc a little bit because he's going to stick around after Luffy and Zoro leave, okay? That was something I've always... um. I've always been, like, they kind of gloss over it pretty quickly. Like, after Morgan is defeated, after Zoro cuts down Morgan and he's thrown in prison awaiting to be court-martialed, uh, Kobe just kind of becomes a chore boy there. You know, there's like, all right, I guess you could be a chore boy. You want to be a Marine, huh? Okay, you mop the floor, I guess. Uh, in the live-action series, it's like the next day. It's like the next day after Morgan, Kobe's already a cadet, as well as with uh, Helmeppo. And it's like, whoa, okay, that happened quick. So... I think a good way to round out Shellstown arc, you know, maybe add an extra chapter or two to it, not very much, is after Luffy and Zoro leave, Commander Ripper is then made uh, the commanding officer in charge of Shellstown. And so he imprisons Morgan in the prison cell there, awaiting for Garp to show up and court-martial him and bring him back and everything like that. And in the meantime... Uh, Kobe's just kind of there. He's in the town. Maybe he hangs out over at the, uh, the tavern where Rika and her mom were at. And, um, y you know, because the Marine base is going to be in chaos after the event. Like, their captain was just defeated, and now he's in prison, and now Commander Ripper's taken over. It's like all this paperwork he has to do and everything like that. So Kobe is probably just going to be hanging out at the bar or the inn for a couple of days. And, uh, Helmeppo, meanwhile, I don't think Helmeppo would have been imprisoned, like, the same as Morgan. They're not going to, like, lock him up in the same cell or anything. But Helmeppo might be under, like, house arrest at this point. They'll probably, like, because, like, okay, you were a dick to everybody at this Marine base, and the only reason we put up with it was because your dad was the commander, well, was the captain in charge of everything. Well, he's not around anymore. He committed a bunch of crimes. You know, we're, we're writing down the list of things that your dad is going to be court-martialed for, okay? So... They know Helmeppo is not really dangerous, uh, but, you know, we can't have you, like, you know, walk around wherever because you might let your dad escape or something. You might help him. So we're going to keep you locked in your room, and we're not going to, like, let you out. You're under house arrest, basically. Meanwhile, Kobe's at the tavern, and he's really nervous because he wants to go and ask to be a Marine, but he doesn't really know how to do it. And maybe Rika and Rika's mom could kind of give him some confidence there. It's like Rika's like, here, have some rice balls. And I'm like, okay. And it's just like, hey, listen, I know Luke. Luffy and Zoro were the ones that defeated Morgan. I, I know that. You're not as strong as them. But that's okay, though. That's what the Marines are for. And maybe, actually, Rika and her mom, I, I don't remember if she was ever given a name, but, like, maybe they could tell, like, hey, listen, Morgan was horrible. Morgan was awful. Helmeppo was awful. But that doesn't mean all the Marines were awful. They could even tell stories about, like, you know, w you know, Morgan was not always the commander of this base. I remember back in the day, maybe when Rika's mom was a little kid, you know, back in the day, it was Captain, um, not, not Captain Morgan, it was Captain, uh, Vodka. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, I'm just going with, you know, but he was like, oh, there was a different Marine captain back in the day, and he was a good, he was a Marine captain that was a good guy. He loved everybody, and then this asshole Morgan took over, and it was like, like, it all went downhill from there. But um, maybe, Kobe, you could become a Marine, and you could maybe make things better for people. Isn't that the whole point of being a Marine? And Kobe's like, yeah, it is. So then Kobe gets the confidence to go up to the Marine base, and he shows up, and the guards are there, and he's like, what do you want? And he's like, I, I, I want to I enlist. And he's like, kid, we're just in the middle of, like, it's chaos in here right now. We can't be taking on new recruits. Like, I... I really want to become a Marine. I, I helped bring down Morgan. I, I want to become a Marine. And then and it was like, all right, fine. You come and talk to Ripper. He's really busy, but whatever. And I want to have a scene where Kobe is actually given like an interview. Okay? Not like an actual... He's not enlisted as like a seaman recruit like most people are. He becomes a chore boy, okay? But I want to see a moment where Ripper sits down with Kobe and we, you know, he talks to him and kind of grills him a little bit on like, why do you want to be a Marine so badly? You know, why do you want to be a Marine? You worked with that, that straw hat kid, and he said he was a pirate. Does that mean you're a pirate? Are you sympathetic to a pirate? Very similar to the scene that happens with Garp and Kobe in the live action. I really like that scene, but more than anything, I want, I want Ripper to have a line during this interview where he says, like, hey, okay, tell you what, I only have one more question for you, Kobe. You know that Helmeppo guy? The guy with the stupid haircut. Yeah, well, he's Morgan's son, you know? And right now, we're kind of holding him on house arrest. His dad is going to be thrown up for, oh, 
a litany of crimes. As soon as the vice admiral arrives here, uh, yeah, he's going to be taken away and tried and, uh, you know, convicted. But uh, we don't really know what to do with Helmeppo because his only crime is just being a, just being an asshole, kind of. So, Kobe, what, what should we do? If you were in my position, what would you do to Helmeppo? All right? And Kobe's going to remember, like, Helmeppo held me at gunpoint. I mean, hammer gunpoint. He almost killed me. But I don't really think he's that bad of a guy. Honestly, I kind of feel sorry for him. I wouldn't... You know what? I would enlist him in the Marines, too. But I would, I would have him start at the very bottom. You know, and then and that's what I would do. I wouldn't I wouldn't convict him or anything like that. I would give him a chance to change his ways. Maybe he could be better than his dad. You know, uh, the sins of the father are not the sins of the son kind of thing. Right. And maybe Ripper would just be there really serious like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I was going to make you just a seaman recruit. I was just going to enlist you like a normal person. But if you you know, if, if you know the idea of Helmeppo starting at the very bottom, would you be okay with starting at the very bottom with him? And Kobe would be like, yes, anything. And he would be like, okay, you're both chore boys. And then here are your, here are your caps and here are your chore boy Zatsuyo t-shirts and uh, here's your mops. Learn your mop. Respect your mop. It will be your sidearm for this entire adventure, okay? And Kobe's like, I love you, mop. <laughs> and then so it's like, all right, well... Tonight is chilly Thursday, so you might want to prepare for your first big mission, son. <laughs> Just like the men are hungry, they're going to be eating that chili, and oh, the communal bathrooms are going to be a mess. It's going to be a war zone. It's going to be worse than, than God Valley, son, so you might be getting ready for that, right? So then you have the scene where Helmeppo is freed from, like, the house arrest, and he's just like, finally, I'm out of here. You, you fools finally learned who's the boss around here. And they're like, yeah, here. And <laughs> just like, yeah, we are. Here you go. And gives him the mops. Like, what is this? And then Kobe's there just, like, waving, like, hey, buddy. <laughs> We gotta go mop up the bathroom. It's like, no, it's chilly Thursday, though. No! And that's that's kind of the ending of the Shellstown arc, you know? Where their great adventure begins as chore boys, right? There you go. Like, Kobe sort of kind of got Helmeppo a pardon. Not really. It wasn't anything serious, like a serious pardon or anything like that. But Kobe kind of convinced Ripper to, like, hey, you know... You know, you could convict him like his or his father. You could kick him out of the town or out of the village. But, you know, he was an asshole to all you guys. What's the better way to get back at him? Make him a chore boy. There you go. And he's like, all right, yeah, you do. You raise a good point there, Kobe. All right, there you go. So, yeah, that'll be into the Shellstown arc. Okay, then... We have the first uh, story arc that is now, like, Luffy's not included in this, Zoro's not including in this. Luffy and Zoro are in Orange Town at this point, okay? And by the way, I have to kind of include, like, time skips, like, how long their arcs are going to be compared to Kobe's arcs, okay? So, while uh, Luffy and Zoro are at Orange Town meeting Nami, and then Syrup Village meeting Usopp, and then at the Baratier meeting uh, Sanji, we're going to have the chore boy arc or the zatsuyo arc okay so that's why all this is going on now most of this will be the diary of kobe meppo just expanded on it the diary of kobe meppo was the cover series okay now there is a little bit of hiccup i will mention right now uh in the anime later on, I believe it's when uh, the, the Straw Hat crew were going from Whiskey Peak to Little Garden. There was like a two episode, not really filler because it is canon material, but the setup was filler. Where they see the newspaper and Luffy and Zoro reminisce about Kobe and Helmeppo and be like, oh hey, they're entering the Grand Line. You know, so the idea is that was happening concurrently with them going to Little Garden, but I'm going to, that, that, that setup is not really accurate. That was something that was added in the anime, okay? All we know is that they were both chore boys and then they started training under Garp eventually through the diary of Kobe Meppo, okay? We're also going to explain what the Marines are. That's going to be something big here. So the Marine ranks, like this uh, handy little reference chart right here, there's going to be like a whole section where maybe Helmeppo explains this to Kobe. Where Kobe and Helmeppo, they're mopping up the bathrooms, and they're like, wow, I can't believe I'm a Marine. Can you believe it, Helmeppo? And Helmeppo is just like, just stop talking to me. I don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? And Kobe's like, man... Someday I can't wait to get a higher rank. Like, eventually I'll become a commander like Commander Ripper, and then a captain like Morgan, and then a... 
Actually, I don't know. What happens after Captain? And then that's when Helmeppo is like, oh my god, Kobe, you're an idiot. Do you not know the ranks of Marines? And then we could have a really cool, like, double-page spread where it's like Helmeppo's face and then the reference chart as he explains. <laughs> He's just like, Kobe, these are the ranks of the Marines. And Kobe's there like, oh my god, that's so cool. I can't wait until I become a rear admiral. And just like, Kobe, you can't become a rear admiral. You can't even be, you won't even make it to Ensign, probably. Do you know how hard it is to go through the ranks it took my dad it my dad had to take down the the curl of a thousand plans to become the captain he is right now and and you know he was way strong you know there's no way you're going to be able to make it we're, we're going to be stuck shore boys forever you know so we're going to learn a lot about the marines we're going to learn about uh the admirals here like like helmeppo could have this big dramatic scene where kobe's just bugging him constantly You're like so so what's the highest rank of the marines what's the highest you can go and then that's when it's like well there's vice admirals and then there's admirals and it's like that's what i want to be I want to be an admiral, and Helmeppo is just going to laugh at him, and maybe some other Marines at Shellstown are going to hear him talking about that, like, I want to be an admiral someday, and those Marines are going to be like, <laughs> okay, kid, okay, all right, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, first mate uh, uh, Ukari, he, he puked over in the, uh, the hallway there, you got to go mop that up, right, oh, by the way, Ukari, he's not a first mate, He's actually a, um, I think he was a seaman recruit. I think he was like the lowest rung. He was one of the, the Marines that was like hoisting up Morgan's statue. He's going to be Kobe's friend. I want Kobe and Ukari to become close friends there where Ukari is, he actually has an official rank. He's at the very bottom of the rung, but he still has an official rank. Kobe really doesn't yet, okay? But I want Ukari to be like, hey, Kobe, Thanks for saving us from Morgan. That, that guy was really mean. He's like, oh, no problem, Ukari. And then he's like, you know what? I, I heard you talking about being an admiral, Kobe. And, you know, it's just like, I, I want to be an admiral too, but everyone laughs at me. So don't, don't worry. I know you can achieve your dream. And Kobe is just like, yeah, I can, Ukari. Us together. We'll both be admirals. Kobe and Ukari. And then Helmeppo's in the background, and he's just like, oh, my God, this is so stupid. Helmeppo, do you want to be an admiral too? Shut up. You know, and just like that's going on in the background. Maybe they're like three really good friends. Morgan is also going to play a role in this in this chore boy arc because Morgan is still in the base. I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to use him during this arc, okay? Morgan is in the jail cell down there. He needs food. Somebody needs to bring him food. It's not going to be the Marines, like the higher-ranking Marines. It, they're going to send the chore boys to do it. Now, they're not going to send Helmeppo to bring his dad food because Helmeppo could sneak a key or something or a nail file in there to, you know, you know, get his dad freed. So they're probably going to send Kobe. So Kobe's going to go down into the basement of Shellstown, into the prison holding cells, and he's going to be the one to bring food to Morgan. And I want to have some scenes where Morgan is kind of talking to Kobe there, uh, reminiscent a little bit if you've ever seen The Walking Dead, um, like those scenes where Carl's talking to Negan in the cells, you know. And so it might be kind of something like that where Morgan is there and he's just like, oh, so they sent you. They actually enlisted you in the Marines. Oh, you're just a Zatsu. You know, you're just a stupid shore boy mopping crap off the communal bathroom. And Kobe's like, hey, I might be just a chore boy now, but I'm going to be a higher rank someday, and I'm going to be a better captain than you ever were. And Morgan's just going to, oh, you stupid idiot kid. But as the days go on and as Kobe delivers his food, they might actually start talking, and it might be a point where Kobe's like, you know, you're a horrible Marine. You're the off most horrible Marine ever. That's not what the Marines stand for, the kind of stuff you were doing. You were abusive to your own men. You were a monster. And then... That's when Morgan is just chuckling like, oh, kid, kid, look, I might not been an angel or anything like that, but um, the Marines are a little bit more complicated than you're aware. I could tell you stories about stuff I have heard and the stuff I have seen all over the, you know, the years I've been a Marine with Marines way higher rank than I am. And Kobe's like, that's not true. That's not true. The Marines are good. They're Because Kobe is very idealistic at this point. Kobe is like, he's like Kai, like my character Kai in One Piece Marines D&D. Like he is that level of like naive. And he's like, the Marines are all good people. You're the only bad apple. And Morgan is like, kid, you know, uh, <laughs> oh man, I, you know what? You'll find out if you just stay in the Marines long enough. You rise, to, you do it. You do what you say you do. You rise through the ranks, and you'll see pretty soon the kind of organization the Marines really are. You know, you'll see what justice really is all about. You'll see what the world government's always really about, you know. Uh, and you'll see that, you know, compared to that, 
my actions, they were nothing compared to this. And Kobe just like, I don't believe you, I don't believe you. So I would love that. In fact, I would love like one of the chapters is like Kobe like runs off crying or he's just, like, no, it's not true. The Marines are a good organization. There's no such thing as evil Marines. And like Kobe's running away up the stairs and Morgan is just there in his dark little cell, like eating his, his biscuit or whatever. And he's just like, you'll find out someday, kid. You'll find out. You know, and that's the end of the chapter, right? And Kobe's like, no! You know, it's like something like that. Okay. The ending of the chore boy arc will be the part of the diary of Kobe Meppo where Morgan uh, escapes, where Morgan is like, okay, so Garp shows up and then there's the scene on the ship and then Morgan slashes Garp and then he kidnaps Helmeppo and grabs him and takes him in the ship. And Helmeppo has a little bit of a moment where he tells off his dad and he's just like, you know, I'm standing up to you, father. You're a horrible dad. You never really loved me. You know, and then that's when Kobe's like, I will protect my friend. And then like Bogard gets involved. Garp wakes back up and he's like, hey, What's, what's going on? And then he sees the bravery exhibited in Kobe. He makes Kobe and Helmeppo his disciples, okay? And then meanwhile, Morgan escapes. He gets away. And that, that's canon. That actually does happen. And in the case with the manga, we actually don't know what happened to Morgan. He escaped, and we just don't know what happened to him after that, right? So that'll be the events. That'll be the Chore Boy arc. And that'll be going on uh, as Syrup Village, Orangetown Syrup Village, and the Baratier in the main story. So these arcs might span a little bit longer period of time, okay? So that arc ends. Garp is now taking Kobe and Helmeppo under his wing, and they go to Marine HQ. And this kicks off the training arc, or the Marine School arc. <laughs> so this is where we get a little bit into My Hero Academia territory. But it really is kind of like a school arc, because we had those flashbacks recently at Hachinosu, uh, when, like, S.W.O.R.D. was attacking the Blackbeard Pirates and everything. We saw the flashback where Kobe and Helmeppo and uh, Prince Groose and uh, Koj uh, Kujaku were all in, like, that hall, and, like, like the little hall, like, the college class or whatever, and Garp is, like, teaching a class, you know? So th that kind of is, like, Marine school, all right? So they get taken to Marine HQ in the Grand Line, and they begin their education. They're still technically chore boys at the beginning of this arc, um, as, as Garp is giving that lesson and everything like that. I think you saw, like, on the back of Kobe's shirt, it still said Zatsuyo on it, okay? So, you know... We're going to expand on that a little bit. So Kobe and Helmeppo arrive at Marine HQ, and, and Garp is like, all right, kids, you're going to have some classes. And then there's some physical, you're going to do gym class with me and Bogart. You, you know what I mean? But you got to do your regular classes because you don't know anything. No offense, Kobe, but you really don't know anything about the Marines, okay? You need to learn some stuff, you know, you strengthen your mind before you strengthen your body, you know, or something like that, right? So we're going to have a little school arc where we're going to introduce... Prince Cruz and Kujaku, all right? And they're going to be like the popular kids. Kujaku is the granddaughter of Osuru, for God's sake. That might not be revealed immediately. To us, that was revealed immediately. But in this, it might be like something that happens later on in the arc or maybe even in the next arc. What's going to happen is we find out Kujaku is the granddaughter of this marine, like, legend, okay? And then Prince Cruz is there. Prince Cruz is going to be like the Sasuke. He's going to be like the cool guy. Everybody loves him. He's super talented. He doesn't have his devil fruit yet. He doesn't have the clay fruit yet. Kujaku doesn't have the whip fruit yet. But they're just like, you know, skilled in their own rights, but they're learning to be Marines. They're around the same age as, as Kobe. They were in that class, like, together, okay? It just goes to show, in just two years, or a little over two years, probably closer to three years, because it's, like, all pre-time skip and then post-time skip, how much, you know, people can change, right? Kobe went from a nobody to a Zatsuyo all the way up to captain within, like, a little bit under three years. That's impressive. And uh, Prince Gruus and Kujaku kind of do the same thing, except they become rear admirals, okay? So that's very impressive, right? But they all start off in the same place, and we can have all the Marines here and everything like that, and they're all studying and learning about stuff, and, and just like, okay, you know, uh, if you had to choose between an old man and a baby, and you can only keep yourself and one other person in the boat, who do you take? And it's like, oh, well, uh, I would let the old man and the baby survive, and I would be left behind. It's like, no, let the old man die, Kobe. The old man's going to die soon anyway. It's the baby that's going to be the next generation that's going to carry the torch, right? So Garp's teaching those kind of 
of lessons. But there's other like Marine vice admirals and stuff that could come in. Like like Stainless comes in at some point, and he's just like, "All right, kids, I'm gonna teach you about this." And Mamonga comes in, and he's like, "I will teach you about sword theory. You know, like how to use your sword, really. You know, kendo and stuff like that, right?" And meanwhile, they get special training from Bogart, like in in the um, behind the scenes at night. Kobe is working the battleship bags, and he's like, you know, breaking his fingers and knuckles doing it and everything like that. While this is happening, this is when Kobe begins to rise through the ranks a little bit. This is when he stops becoming a Zatsuyo and he becomes like a seaman apprentice or something because he is like an apprentice under Garp, okay? And they're going to start going out on missions. Now, they're going to be relatively low-level missions at first. It might be something, and this is something I brought up in another video. The first mission might have been something where, like, uh, there's some bandits attacking a village. So, like, Bogart takes some marines that include Kobe and Helmeppo, and they go to the island, and they take out most of the bandits, but then, like, a couple escape. Like, two bandits escape, and that's when Bogard looks at Helmeppo and Kobe and says, you guys go deal with this. If you can't deal with these two, like, low-level bandits that you are not worthy of being in the marines, this is after they've trained for a couple of weeks, like, you go give it a shot, right? And so they go do that, and they win. And then maybe the next mission is a solo mission for just Kobe and Helmeppo. Like, like, Bogard's not there, Garp's not there, they have to do this on their own, okay? And maybe they do that, and then Kobe gets promoted to seaman first class or something like that. And then Helmeppo is like, this is when he becomes, he leaves Zatsuyo and he becomes a recruit or something like that. You know what I mean? So Helmeppo's a little bit behind Kobe. Prince Gruus and Kujaku are going to be a little bit above Kobe, though. When Kobe becomes a, you know, first class seaman or whatever, <laughs> that's when uh, Kujaku and Prince Gruus are like master chief petty officers or something like that. Or, or Prince Gruus is already a warrant officer by that point, okay? And so that that's kind of how all that divvies up. We're going to see a couple of missions. This is going to take place from like the Arlong Park all the way up to like Alabasta. So this is going to be a lot of time. This is going to be a long arc, but it's going to be a bit of an anthology. We're going to carry this through, okay? So, you know, Arlong Park, Reverse Mountain, Whiskey Peak, Little Garden, Drum Island, Alabasta, while the Straw Hats are all doing that. Kobe and Helmeppo, they are training hard. They're learning at Marine HQ. They're training at night, practicing kendo. Uh, you know, Kobe's working the battleship bags. They're going out on missions. They're getting progressively like higher ranking stuff. Um, um, that kind of jazz, okay? All the meanwhile, you have some school stuff happening in the background, like Prince Screw shoving Kobe into lockers or something like that. I, I don't know. You know, you could throw a little bit of slice of life kind of shit in there too. Um, you know, and, and, and we'll see where this goes. We'll see where this happens. But one of the missions, one of the missions that Kobe goes out on, okay, it's going to be in the East Blue because they're Marines. They have the ability to kind of go in and out of the Blues whenever. So if they're in the Paradise side of the Grand Line, like Marine HQ, you could go to the East. You could go to the South. Like, that's not a big deal for Marines, okay? Well, there's going to be one thing. It's like, all right, Kobe, Helmeppo, attention. You know, Prince Groose, Kujaku, you're all, you're all going out on a mission together here. There's a little bit of Jujutsu Kaisen in this, too, I can notice. Anyway, okay, we got a mission. Uh, some pirates are attacking the East. You know, ever since Arlong and uh, Krieg were defeated, it's been a little bit of a power vacuum in the East, and uh, a lot of pirates are acting up now. I love that idea. Luffy went through and bulldozed, like, all of the highest-ranking pirates in the East, and then Luffy just went into the Grand Line. So, Buggy is, is defeated. He's in the Grand Line chasing after Luffy. Krieg is gone. Arlong is wiped out. And so now, the East Blue is just a massive power vacuum waiting to happen, okay? So, a lot of other pirates are going to be, like, rising to the occasion. So, they're like, all right, I got a mission for you guys. Uh, there's an island in the East Blue that's being attacked by some pirates, they're not super strong, but they're also not super weak. So it's maybe maybe like a group of like a bunch of low-level pirates got together and was like, okay, this, this low-level pirate group got together to try to make an alliance to get stronger, okay? So um, there are some pirates uh, that are there, and the Marines in East Blue are already fighting them, but they're having a little bit of a trouble, so I'm sending you guys after them. So it's Kobe, Helmeppo, Kujaku, and Prince Cruz, maybe some other Marines too. They go into the East, and it's a little bit of a, not really a war zone. I, the thing is, the first time Kobe ever sees an actual war zone is Marine Ford, because he starts crying and freaking out. So we can't have anything too intense yet, but it is a battle, okay? And so the Marines are struggling a little bit, and they're going to go there, and they're going to fight a little bit, and this is when Kobe's going to take out some pirates on his own, but also, Ukari's going to be here from Shellstown, 
and Ukari's going to die. He's going to get a sword wound right through his gut, and then Kobe's going to be fighting the pirates, and he's going to be like, we're winning. We're pushing them back. And then, oh, no, Marine. Oh, no, Ukari. <laughs> Hi, Kobe. I see your training's going well under Garp. Maybe I could join, too. Yeah, you could join, too. I'll ask Garp. You can come to school with me. I met this guy named Prince Cruz. He's kind of a dick, but he's kind of cool. Ah, that's awesome, Kobe. <laughs> and Ukari's gonna die in Kobe's arms. That's gonna be the moment in the story where Kobe realizes life and death, man. This is what it is right here. Marines fight pirates. They don't always win. People die that you care about, right? And so Ukari is going to die in Kobe's arms, and then that's going to give him motivation to get even stronger, okay? So we got to have that. I'm sorry, Ukari, but we got to have that. Also, I want a scene where Garp shows up and is badass, though. I want, like, you know, after they're fighting through all the pirates, you get into a, a pirate that's relatively strong. Like, he might be the next up-and-comer of the East Blue. He might be the next Krieg or something like that, right? And then it's something that even, like, Prince Cruz, Kujaku, they can't even really handle. And then Garp shows up at the last minute and just galaxy impact and just one shots all the remaining pirates and like all right everybody you guys did good I'll, I'll handle the cleanup don't worry about me you know just like oh thank you god damn garf that was getting a little bit scary there you know it was getting a little bit tight where it's like maybe a lot of pirates were joining forces or something like that right okay and so it's like okay garp shows up because i want i want more showing of garp i want garp to kind of show off like the level of power here with the actual story we have the warlords and like crocodile for that but while Kobe is in training a lot, we have to have some badass older character showcase power. And I want to see that from Garp. And I also want to see that from Bogart. I want Bogart's, like, backstory to be shown at some point here. And we learn a little bit more about him. Okay, so that's cool. All right. So, yeah, that's going to be the training arc. And it's going to end with Ukari dying and Kobe having new motivations for, you know, continuing on. And, and also looking at Helmeppo and, like, I don't want you to die, Helmeppo. And Helmeppo's like, all right, I... You know what, Kobe? I don't want you to die either. And so it ends with some camaraderie. Like in the previous arc, it was very clear Kobe and Helmeppo, Helmeppo did not like Kobe. But at, by the end of this arc, after they've been through some training and some lessons and some missions together, they become bros. They become like, you know what, Kobe? We can make it through. You know, you and I, I watch your back, you watch mine, man. And it's like, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so that'll be the training arc, okay? Next up. I am taking a page directly out of my Hero Academia here, okay, with the sports fest, but I don't care. The Marine Tournament Arc. The Marine Rookie Tournament Arc, okay? There's not a lot of tournament arcs in One Piece. It's a shonen staple, but we don't see it too much in One Piece. We got the Coliseum at Dressrosa, and where else do we have a tournament? I guess maybe the Davy back fight, but no. I'm not talking about the Davy back. I'm not talking about the Coliseum fights. I'm talking about a straight-up Dragon Ball Z, draw lots tournament, you know, preliminaries, Fi you know, uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, final matches. That's what I'm talking about. Something at the end of the sports fest, okay, in my here academia. That's the kind of shit I want to see here. And you know what? It didn't really work maybe in, in One Piece because Luffy's a pirate. There's really no organizational structure to that. But in the Marines, there most certainly is. So I propose to you, while the Straw Hats are in Jaya and blasting off into the sky, into the Skypea arc and everything, we're going to have a Marine tournament arc, okay? And so it's only going to be Marines that are infantry. No, no officers are allowed to participate. The whole point of this is very similar to the sports fest in My Hero Academia where you get a bunch of rookies together to show their skills, and then you get some high-ranking Marines watching this, like rear admirals, vice admirals, captains. They're all, they're all watching. Garp is there, of course. He's observing. That'll be a big thing for this year. Vice Admiral Garp, the hero of the Marines, is here to observe the, the 75th annual Marine Rookie Tournament, right? And... Um, the winners of the tournament are kind of spotted by higher, you know, like Marines, like vice admirals and stuff. It's like, I want, I want that Marine, that rookie to fight with me on my ship for a little while, you know? So kind of like with the, um, the internships and the work study kind of stuff, right? But it, it does work with the Marines, like why they would do something like this, right? Especially like when there's nothing crazy going on in the world and also like, you know, supports morale and everything like that. Like that, that would be a cool thing. So... In this tournament, we're going to have Kobe and Helmeppo, obviously. We're also going to have Kujaku and Prince Cruz. And we're going to have Full Body and Django. Because at this point, 
Django's cover story has happened. Django's Dance Dance Paradise has occurred. And at this point, they are both now recruits because Full Body got demoted and Django became a Marine. So in order for Django to join to become a seaman recruit, Full Body had to go from lieutenant down to recruit as well. And so they're working under Hina. So Hina is like, you two idiots are going to go join this tournament and you're going to do well. Okay, because it's more of like a competition between Marines. You know, like Garp is there and he's like, these are my entries into this you know and then Osuru's there and she's like my granddaughter's here Hina's looking at her crew and the only recruits she have that qualify are are full body and Django and she's like you two better do well at this and just like oh we will miss Hina is like yo you better so you got Kobe Helmeppo Kujaku Prince Cruz full body and Django and this is the arc where Hibari is introduced. Hibari is there, and she's really nervous, and she's like, oh, I don't want to be here right now. This is, uh... And then, Akainu shows up as one of the other people that's observing the tournament. You can see I'm doing, like, a Todoroki Endeavor thing with Hibari and Akainu, but it works! It works, okay? So if we're going along with the logic that Hibari is Akainu's daughter, which might be the case, um, for those of you wondering, if you're still wondering, like, he's like, why, why do you keep saying Hibari is Akainu's daughter? Is there any evidence for that? The only evidence we have for that is that Hibari and Akainu speak in a very similar, uh, they, the only Marines that speak in a particular kind of dialect or accent, okay? There's this specific, I think it's a Hiroshima dialect, and Akainu and Hibari speak it in the Marines and nobody else does, okay? So that that's the idea that they might in fact be related, but they might not be. But in this, they 100% are, okay? Akainu is Hibari's dad. And so Akainu, the idea is, wants his daughter to be a Marine. So he was, like, giving her, like, private schooling into being a Marine and stuff. So she wasn't in the class with, like, Kobe and Prince Cruz and everybody. But now the tournament's happening. And so, like, special recommendation, Akainu is going to be like, my daughter Hibari is going to participate in this tournament. And she's going to win. And then meanwhile, Hibari is like, Dad, I don't even know if I really want to be a Marine. I want to, like, be, I, I want to be a fashion designer or something. Because if you look at Hibari's outfits, they're really cool. Like, you could tell, like, she, she personalizes her own outfits all the time. So maybe she's into fashion. Maybe she's like, Dad, I want to be, like, a fashion designer. I want to make criminal clothing or something. I want to be, like, work for criminal. I don't want to, it's like, no daughter of mine's going to be a criminal. I'm like, no, I don't mean be a criminal. I mean work for criminal. The clothing brand. Do you not even even pay attention to my life <laughs> and then a kind who's just like oh kids oh, damn it's hard being a single parent all right uh, you know so i want that though so i want a to walk over and sit down next to garp as they watch the tournament unfold and they have a little back and forth there because in the actual one piece manga the first admiral we get to meet is around this time it's at long ring long land but close enough if this is happening concurrently with skypea uh the first admiral we, we meet is aokiji and in this version, the first admiral we meet is a Kainu. Okay, and so that could be a thing where Kobe could be looking up and he could see a Kainu up there and he'd be like, he's like, and Admiral Akainu has taken time out of his busy schedule to be a judge at this year's tournament. And it's just like, oh my God. Oh, by the way, this tournament's occurring at Marine HQ. For those of you curious, it's like actually taking place there. It's not like some other part of the world because all the Marines are there already. It's just a lot of them are busy, right? So it's like a Kainu's looking down and he's just like, hmm. And he's mean. And Kobe is just like, I want to be like him someday. I want to be an admiral someday. He's like, this is like Kobe's first time seeing an admiral doing his thing, you know? So that's cool, right? So the tournament's going to happen. And I'm not going to go into, like, who's going to fight who. You can make a determination for that. There's other Marines, too, like younger Marines. I went through the whole list. Um, and those are the only ones that really fit the bill for this year. Although it's funny because Full Body is, like, in his, like, 30s. <laughs> and he's a recruit. And he's just, like, in this tournament with like a bunch of kids and he's just like oh this this is so demeaning this sucks but like full body is also determined to like i'm gonna i'm gonna win this tournament and i'm gonna get back to lieutenant and i'm gonna make hina proud kobe is going to beat full body Kobe and Full Body are going to fight, maybe not in the first round, but like the second round or something, after some of the lower-ranked Marines are taken out or whatever. Full Body's going to fight Kobe, and Full Body's going to be a little arrogant because he's like, kid, I might be a recruit right now, but I used to be a lieutenant, okay? I, I chose to lower my rank for a friend. And then Kobe's going to be like, 
oh, I have a friend too. That's so cool. He's like, yeah. So full body is going to be a little arrogant here because he's thinking like he's older than Kobe. He's stronger than Kobe. He's had more training. But that arrogance is going to be the death of him. And it might, you know, Kobe's going to take some punches from full body's fist. And it's looking like Kobe's going to go down. But he's going to get back up. And he's going to maybe the first time we'll see him use the honesty impact. But it's going to be a very low level one. It's going to be like, <laughs> I could be a strong Marine. Just like Garp. Honesty impact. Boom. And it like hits full body right in the stomach. And it's like. And then his eyes just go whited out. And then full body like collapse. And Kobe's just like. I did it. You know, and everyone's like. He beat him. Woo. Kobe. And Garp's up there laughing. like, <laughs> And then Hina's just like. Oh. I'm going to step on him tonight. No. He'll enjoy that. Damn it. I uh, can't even punish them when they do wrong because they get turned on by it. Yeah, you know, maybe we can have Django fight Helmeppo. Say Django beats Helmeppo. I, I would say that probably happens with that because, uh, you know, he's still a little bit below him. But then in the next round, Kujaku fights uh, Django and beats him. You know, that would be cool. Prince Cruz could fight against, uh, you know, Prince Cruz and Hibari could fight. You know, we have that. So Hibari's there using her skills, you know, gunsmanship or whatever. Like she's really skilled, uh, not on the level she is right Right now, but she shows promise, right? But Prince Cruz will defeat her. That's kind of like the Bakugo uh, Uraraka fight, where Uraraka gives it a hundred percent, and the whole arena is kind of like, "Ooh, this is a little bit. Uh, maybe you should just give up." You know what I mean? But no, she gives it a hundred and ten percent. So Hibari is going to go for it, and even though she's not a hundred percent on wanting to be a marine, she's going to go for it anyway. And then Prince Cruz is going to beat her, and uh, it's going to be a moment where Akainu just gets infuriated, right, in in the background, right? And so we could have some moments there with Hibari and her dad um, but maybe Kobe can talk to her a little bit and like hey Hibari you know it's it's okay you can you, you can be a great marine he's like I don't even want to be a marine and so I, I would like in the background of this series for Hibari to slowly begin like you know what I do want to be a Marine, but for my own reasons, not for my dad's reasons or anything like that, but for my own reasons. Like, so, you know, you got to understand, it's not just Kobe and no, no other characters. There's a whole supporting cast here. I just can't focus on all of them, right? Because this is already a 50-minute video, and we're not even up to halfway through this yet, okay? So anyway, we'll have that, we'll have that moment. We'll have a tournament arc. It'll be really cool. Kobe's not going to win the tournament, though. Just like Deku didn't win the Sports Fest. Uh, Kobe's not going to win. Although, maybe he could rank, like, third. Maybe Kobe could rate, like, third or something like that. Prince Cruz is going to win the tournament. And the prize for the tournament is you get a devil fruit. And the devil fruit is going to be the clay clay fruit. And he's going to eat that. And he's going. that's how Prince Cruz is going to get his powers. Okay? It's like the, the, you, are, you are the winner of this year's Marine Rookie Tournament. You are the most promising Marine out of all of the original, the new recruits we have. Uh, you get a devil fruit, son, if you want it. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. But if you want this devil fruit, it's going to someone good. Like, that's the whole point of the tournament. And that's the clay clay fruit. And then Prince Cruz opts to eat it. And then that's... That's where he gets his power. Okay, so that, there you go, right? Uh, in the background while this is happening, there's going to be a staff, like people that are like the proctors for various stages of the exam, kind of like the tuning exam from Naruto. Now we're getting into that. So on top of like Garp and Akainu, Hina, Osuru, that are all watching from the higher up, uh, by the way, Smoker and Tashigi, I tried to figure out a way to fit them in here. It, it doesn't work. They're off doing their own thing. They're off doing their own thing in the story. Smoker and Tashigi are not here. Also, Tashigi at this point would be an ensign, so she would not qualify for the tournament. I thought about putting her in here. I guess I could have if I wanted to like move it back a little bit, but no. Tashigi and Smoker have their own thing in the main canon of the story. I don't want to mess with that too much. Okay, so they're doing their own thing, okay? So yeah, Garp, Akainu, Hina, Osuru, uh, maybe like John Giant and, and some other vice admirals like Strawberry and Momonga, they're watching the fights. But then there's the proctors that actually, you know, manage each individual, like, stage of the tournament, okay? And I wrote down three proctors for this. The first proctor is going to be Isuka. Isuka. Nailing Isuka, who was an ensign during Ace's backstory. She's the Marine that was kind of the love interest for Ace. I think originally she was supposed to be. I think Oda scrapped that concept, but I still ship them. Anyway, so she's going to be the Proctor. She. This has been a little bit later, though, because that was Ace was like, you know, uh, he went off to sea three years before the start of the story. So this is three years after that. She could easily be a captain by now. 
Okay, so let's say Captain Isuka is the first proctor, and she's like, you know, the first stage of the fighting. And then let's say the, the stage changes and shifts or something for the next one to make it a little bit more interesting for the audience. And then that proctor is going to be um, Bogard. Okay, so Bogard is the right-hand man of Garp. He's going to be there just to give some more screen time to Bogard because I love him. And then the final stage, like the final match of the tournament, right, which would probably be like... Prince Groose versus uh, Kujaku or something like that. You know, it could be something like that there. And that Proctor is going to be T-Bone. T-Bone's going to be the Proctor. Oh, the glorious young Marines that will carry the torch into the next era of justice. We will have a fair fight here. No hitting below the belts. No poking anyone's eyes out. This is a justice tournament. With that being said, may the fire that burns within you ignite the passion of, of combat or whatever. Go! You know, so it's going to be T-Bone, right? Okay. So that those are the three proctors I want to have. All right, all right. So after this arc, so this is now getting into Long Ring, Long Land, and Water 7 while this is happening in the, in the main story. We now have the new instructor arc. So after the events of the tournament, some Marines are going to get scouted by other, you know, higher-ranked Marines. This is an idea from My Hero, but I like it here because a lot of the similar ideas apply. Like when you want to be a hero in My Hero, it's not just you listen to one hero. You get a bunch of different perspectives. Same thing here with the Marines, where um, Garp is like, Kobe, Helmeppo, look, I still have a lot of stuff to train you, but I'm a busy man. If another Marine wants to take you under their wing for a little while and show you the ropes... I'm not going to say no to that. You should go ahead and you should get other perspectives and get out there in the world, okay? With that being said, I want Kobe. And now, now so the higher ranks, like, like Prince Groose is going to be, like, scouted by, like, Stainless and Momonga. Like, Momonga is going to train, like, Prince Groose because, you know, he, he's the winner of the whole tournament. Kujaku might go and work under Osuru, her grandmother. She might pick somebody else, though, because I was just like, oh, well, maybe she wants to go a different perspective other than Osuru. Or maybe Osuru is like, no, you need to go pick somebody else to train under, okay? But I want Kobe to train under Isuka. I want Isuka to train Kobe a little bit. So this is like an arc that takes place during Long Ring, Long Land, and Water 7, where they go off on their own little adventures, and it's, so it's like Kobe is being taught by Isuka a little bit, and Helmeppo is being taught by T-Bone. T-Bone saw the potential in Helmeppo, and just like, ah, even though his father shirked the responsibility of the Marine, Helmeppo still stands tall, not only... To, to, to shake off the dishonor of his own father, but to make a name for himself in the Marines. I admire him. So I want to see T-Bone grab Helmeppo and like, come here, son. I will show you the way of the true Marine. And Helmeppo's like, I, you're a little bit too much for me. He's like, honor and glory awaits you, young man. Let's go. And Helmeppo's like, ah. <laughs> and so Helmeppo is training under T-Bone. Kobe's training under Isuka. Also, while this is happening... Um, I want Isuka, like, so Kobe will learn a little bit about Ace here. Isuka will talk about her backstory with Ace, and, like, Ace is, used to be the captain of the Spade Pirates. Now he's a commander on Whitebeard's ship, okay? And now he's doing all this kind of crazy stuff, but he's still, like, my rival. I still view him as my rival. And so that'll add a little bit of setup for later when Ace gets captured by Blackbeard and ends up at Marineford. Kobe will know kind of who he is, all right? Also, I don't think Isuka shows up in the second Ace Light novel. Uh, I haven't read that much of the second one, though. I think she shows up in the first one a lot. Like, she's on the cover of the first one. But I don't know if she shows up in the second one. Maybe she does. It's been a while. So... If that is the case, then we don't really know what happened to Isuka. We might actually, in this version, in this manga, we'll see Isuka's reaction to Ace dying. Because originally, I think she was supposed to be Ace's uh, like uh, love interest, and uh, I think Oda did. It's in one of the like like concept notes. It does say love interest, and then Oda like scratched it out or whatever. But who knows? It might still be the case. It definitely is the case in my version of events if I'm the one writing it. You know what I mean? Okay. So um, I, I would imagine it's like at that point, you know, Kobe goes up in rank again. He becomes a, a petty officer at this point. This might be Isuka might teach him a little bit about Rokushiki 
at this point. You know what I mean? Just like, I'm going to teach you the basics of Soru, the basics of Geppo, and stuff like that, okay? Because I feel like Isuka, in the light novel, she couldn't do them, but this has been three years since then, and she's a higher rank now. I feel like Isuka could at least pull off, like, Soru. And her whole thing is she fights with, like, a rapier and stuff, so I feel like a Soru would be very devastating for her to have, okay? So, like, Captain Isuka is going to train Kobe, Captain T-Bone is going to train Helmeppo, uh, and then, like, Stainless and some other people are going to train, like, the higher-ups that won in the tournament. Now, one particular thing is, while Kobe is with Isuka on this little training regiment or whatever, they're going to go to an island, and I think at this point, this is when Kobe's going to encounter his first supernova. I'm thinking it could be Law... But we're going to see the supernovas in a different light here, where the supernovas, like, you know, they're pirates the same as Luffy. Well, now they're, they're the straight-up antagonists in Kobe's story. And they're in the Grand Line, so I wanted to have at least one arc where Kobe runs into the power of a super rookie. I, I wanted maybe Law, because Law is super popular, so showing him, you know, having that moment would be cool. But also, like, later on during the Rocky Port incident, Law's going to tie into that. So it might set up a little bit of rivalry between Kobe and Law, or at least Kobe's aware of Law. Or it could be Kid, it could be Beiji, it could be another supernova. But I want there to be a moment where they're, they're going to an island, pirates are attacking, and then it's a supernova, and then Isuka has to kind of, like, push back. He's like, Kobe, get back to the ship. You're not ready to deal with this guy yet, okay? And then Isuka has a little bit of a battle with um, one of the supernovas. If it's Law, Law uses shambles and, like, disassembles Isuka, and Kobe's like, oh, no! And then eventually Law just like, I'm not going to finish you off. I'm just going to leave you here. You're nothing to me. And then Law leaves, and then, you know, they have to, like, put Isuka back together and just, like, it might be something like that where Kobe gets to see the power of the super rookies the worst generation in person i want a moment where he sees that helmeppo same thing too i want a moment i i really okay i don't want to rewrite the story because that's not the point of this i will say if i could rewrite things if i wanted to i guess it's my video i could do whatever i want i would include helmeppo during the c train incident i would put I would put Helmeppo on the sea train under T-Bone because it doesn't matter either way. It doesn't matter. Zoro defeats T-Bone. He slices the ship in half. So Helmeppo is just one of the random Marines that's in the ships that gets sliced by Zoro. That's it. So Zoro wouldn't even see him. But it would be a cool moment where, like, the ship is, the, the sea train's getting cut in half by Zoro. And you have a moment where Helmeppo's like, ah, I know that guy. Ah! You know, just like, and then Zoro doesn't even notice him, and then they just keep going for Rocket Man, right? And then eventually Zoro clashes with T-Bone, all right? You know what? I'm just going to include it there. I'm just going to put Helmeppo in that one scene right there. I'll do that. Why not? Who cares? Or, alternatively, it could just be like, T-Bone trains Helmeppo for a little while, but then Helmeppo goes back under Garp before the events of the sea train like oh i've been given a special order i need to uh accompany the cypher pull nine on a trip to uh you know bring in nico robin a prisoner and maybe uh hell Meppo's like i don't want to be part of that and t-bone's like well i can't make you come if you don't want to i mean i am your superior officer but i care about your feelings hell Meppo. i truly do and so hell Meppo opts to go do something else maybe he was on another mission while that was happening either way i i wanted to include that because i think hell Meppo working with t-bone works because that helps with Helmeppo's redemption a little bit, coming to terms with his father and the way he was treated, but also that there's redemption for him. Like, he can be, like, he's kind of looking down on, like, like, oh, Kobe is much stronger than me. He's getting stronger than me. I'm nothing in comparison. T-Bone can give him that confidence because that's what T-Bone's all about, right? So I kind of want him to work under T-Bone for a little while, right? And then moving on, while the Straw Hats are in the middle of Eni's lobby, while that's going on, it says Eni's Lobby is a really big arc in One Piece. We're going to have the Revolutionary Army arc. Marines fight the Revolutionaries. This does happen. It's just not focused on all that much in the story, but it would occur, right? So I want the Revolutionaries to be a relevant point of the story. I mean, they are, right? So maybe a little bit earlier on. So at this point, 
Um, you can have Garp uh, back to training Kobe and Helmepo. They come back and rejoin him. And then it's like, okay, we got some revolutionary army members doing some stuff either in the East Blue, which would be Bello Betty, the commander of the East, or the South Blue, which would be Lindbergh. So you could pick either or at this point, which one you would find more uh, interesting. I also thought it would be cool if they could fight, like Kobe goes to deal with Bello Betty, and then Helmepo's group goes to deal with Lindbergh. But they have to they have to join back together at the end because they're, they're at post Denny's lobby. They go back to Water 7 after that arc. So I'm like, they might as well just keep them together here. So they either go to the East or go to the South. But either way, they deal with the Revolutionary Army and they fight them a little bit. But Kobe is also conflicted by this because he's taught that the revolutionaries are trying to overthrow the world government and they're horrible people. They're like demons that are trying to, you know, destroy the world and everything like that. But in reality, if Kobe actually has a moment to interact with Bello Betty or Lindbergh and actually talk to them, he's going to learn or, or talk, not even talk to them directly because that might be a little bit tough, but talk to the people that they saved. Kobe's talking to the citizens that Bello Betty saves like, oh, our entire island was under control of an oppressive king, and the revolutionaries saved us from him. Kobe might have a little bit of an existential crisis here, and he might flash back to what Morgan told him, like the world is more complicated than you think it is, where Kobe might be like, maybe the revolutionaries aren't that bad of a, aren't that bad or anything like that. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. But I did want to have an arc where they encounter the revolutionaries, and, and and his lobby parallel seems to be good. Because Kobe's going to get some training in. He's going to learn to adapt his Soru and his Geppo a little bit. Um, this is where he's going to be promoted to Master Chief Petty Officer. This is the rank he is post Ennis lobby when he meets back up with the crew, okay? And so there's that um, Kobe conflict. This is where Helmeppo is going to hear about T-Bone being defeated by Zoro. So Helmeppo is going to be like, yeah, that T-Bone guy was a little weird. Wait, what? He was defeated by Zoro? Oh, wow. That's crazy because T-Bone was like really powerful. Like Helmeppo would have seen T-Bone's strength firsthand. Like there'll be a scene where T-Bone during the training takes out his sword and slices a giant rock in half. And Helmeppo is like, there's no way I could do something like that. I'm never going to be as strong as you. And then T-Bone was like, no, son, you can be. And then maybe T-Bone is the one that gives him the Kukiri knives. And like, you will train with these Kukiri knives. And Helmeppo's like, okay. And maybe he just takes to it like a duck to water, man. And he's training with these Kukiris and he's getting pretty decent, right? And then in the next arc, they learn that like, oh yeah, T-Bone was defeated by Zoro. And then Helmeppo's like, what? T-Bone was crazy strong and he lost to Zoro? What? You know, so there's the thing. So then after that arc, that's post Denny's Lobby now. So the Straw Hats go back to Water 7 to recover. And then that's when Garp and Bogard and Kobe and Helmeppo show up. Kobe is a Master Chief Petty Officer. Always just a Penny Officer at this point. And uh, that's when they, they have their interaction. So that stays the same. That stays the same. Also, while Kobe was in school, he would have learned about the New World, the Yonko, Vegapunk. He would have learned about all all the stuff in the world that Luffy doesn't know about, Kobe would know about because he went to school for it, okay? So there you go. There's there's the uh, information gap there, okay? So after Ennis Lobby, after the uh, Revolutionary Army arc and after post Ennis Lobby, uh, we have from Thriller Bark to Impel Down, we have the Preparation for War arc. Because it was shortly after Kobe and Helmeppo see Luffy escape Water 7 that Blackbeard defeats Ace. Ace gets brought to Impel Down. And then Whitebeard kind of is like, oh, okay, what's going to happen here, right? So the Marines are aware this is when the big war is going to happen. We need to be ready for this. This is the arc where Kobe is going to, we're going to be introduced properly to Sengoku. Uh, all the vice admirals and admirals are going to be mobilizing. So we're going to like, Kobe might get a chance to actually speak with the fleet admiral at this point. You know what I mean? Like Garp might be like, well, I have to go talk to Sengoku about this war. Kobe, Helmepo, it's time you met the fleet admiral. Let's go. And it's like, oh, wow. So it might be something like that. I also want to see, this is where Smoker and Tashigi are going to tie back into the plot, all right? Smoker and Tashigi are going to show up, and they're going to help train the younger Marines. Smoker being a Logia is going to be like, all right, listen up. I'm a Logia. I'm your friend. 
But a lot of pirates out there that have Logias, they're not your friends. So you're going to train and fight against me, and I'm going to show you some weaknesses that Logias have that you can maybe exploit. So we're going to see maybe Kobe sparring with Smoker a little bit. Prince Grus will be there. Kujaku will be there. Maybe Kujaku has her whip whip fruit at this point in preparation for war. Maybe Osuru gives it to her or something like that, right? And so they're getting ready for this war. Uh, all the vice admirals arrive. We have like, you know, um, you, you know, we have the admirals doing some stuff. The admirals might even personally train them at this point you know like aokiji might come out and be like all right i gotta oh yeah that would actually be really fun if it's like okay we have like a chapter where aokiji trains the marines and then a chapter where kizuru does his training method and then a chapter where akainu does his training method and they're all different aokiji's just like i don't know man this this, this is study hall man just just rest just 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 keep your head down and just don't make a lot of noise you know, and then Akainu is just like, ATTENTION! You know, and then he just starts lobbing, like, he just starts punching random marines, and it's like, he's like a really brutal drill sergeant. Hibari would be here, so Hibari and Kobe's relationship is maybe a little bit more, maybe at this point, Hibari is, like, confident, and she's like, okay, I want to be a marine now. I've, I went away for a little while, I had my own missions, and I've learned that I want to be a marine, and this is what I'm gonna do, okay? And so maybe this is when Kobe and Hibari start hanging out, right? And this is where... Um, maybe they don't join S.W.O.R.D. yet, but this is where S.W.O.R.D. is first mentioned. This is when S.W.O.R.D. is kind of there. Maybe Garp might look down at Kobe at some point and be like, you know, Kobe, you might be ready for S.W.O.R.D. And Kobe's like, what? He's like, nah, never mind. Worry about it after this war is over. Worry about it after Whitebeard makes his move. Then we'll talk about it. You know, it might be something like that, okay, where S.W.O.R.D. is first mentioned, and it's like, okay, right, okay. So, uh, it's... It's going to be a preparation arc. It's, it's going to be like from thr a lot of stuff happens from Thriller Bark all the way to Marineford. So this is going to be maybe not as interesting as like Impel Down, Amazon, Lily, Sab, Odie and all that stuff. But it is important for Kobe to prepare and Helmeppo and all the other Marines. OK, so then we get Marineford, which is the same battle, but just from Kobe and Helmeppo's perspective. So they get to see it from a whole other angle, like reverse angle. This we get an all we get a chapter where Sengoku, Sengoku is explaining the plan. He's explaining explaining the battle plan of like the partition walls and and to like lock them in the bay and we don't know how Whitebeard's going to attack and how all the marines are going to be positioned. This is going to be a lot more of a tactical kind of manga, maybe kingdom a little bit, honestly. We could throw some kingdom in there of like how the marines are going to be structured around the the uh, the the uh, battlements and everything like that for the war and everything that's going to go down and then the war itself happens and it's just Kobe's perspective, right? And of course, this would end with Kobe's triumphant moment of standing in front of Akainu. And this is a whole new dimension to this because he knows Hibari at this point and he's met Akainu before. He might have met, he might have met Akainu back at the tournament. Like, that's the man I want to be. Because that imagine if that was the first admiral that Kobe ever saw in the flesh and blood. Kobe wants to be an admiral. This guy's an admiral. But slowly but surely, he's going to realize that he's a, a kind who's a real hard ass, you know? And a kind who would probably remind him a lot of Morgan. So he's being reminded of Morgan and like he's seeing a kind but he's an admiral. It's like, well, he can't be a bad guy. He's an admiral, right? You know, maybe Kobe might learn a little bit about what like the O'Hara incident was. Although if you're researching the O'Hara incident, you might get you might get killed by Cypher So maybe Kobe shouldn't do that. He sneaks into the Forbidden Library at midnight under the invisibility cloak and he researches <laughs> he researches the Void Century. No, 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 that wouldn't happen. But um, you know, so he he knows Akainu at this point, and then he makes the decision to jump in front of him. That adds a whole new layer to that when Akainu brings down the Magma Fist, okay? And so that's when Shanks shows up, blocks the shot, Kobe passes out, he awakens Observation Hockey during the war, um, he wakes up in the hospital later, Helmeppo's next to him, okay? So all that stuff happens. Now, um, kind of like post-war, we're going to have a post-war training arc with Hockey, because now Kobe has Hockey, but this is the point where he's also going to learn about S.W.O.R.D., all right? Now, I don't think he's going to join yet, because when you join S.W.O.R.D., you basically hand in your Marine ID, and you're no longer an official Marine. So I feel like he would join S.W.O.R.D. after he becomes a captain. So it happens during the time skip, 100%, just not at the beginning of the time skip, right? Kobe trains, gets to be promoted to captain, 
uh, probably after the Rocky Port incident. And then after the Rocky Port incident, maybe that's when he decides to join S.W.O.R.D. and hand in his badge. So he's kind of just a permanent captain right now. Or maybe they could still gain ranks even after they join S.W.O.R.D. Maybe they could. I'm not really sure, though. It's just that the Marines have plausible deniability if they go off on their own, right? Okay, so we want to see a, a post-war training arc with hockey, S.W.O.R.D. arc that's going to focus on Hibari, and then... Um, the Morgan return arc. So this is all during the time skip. This is all while Luffy and everybody, like Luffy's on Ruskaya and training with Rayleigh and everything like that. Okay. So also, by the way, I know that um, episode of Luffy takes place kind of during this time period. I'm not, I'm just removing that from canon in this, in this point. Okay. So this is going to be a small arc. It's not going to be long. Maybe like a couple chapters, maybe like three, four chapters and that's it. Okay. But so Kobe and Helmeppo have been training at this point, and they're pretty strong. Maybe Kobe is not a captain yet, but maybe he's like a lieutenant at this point, okay? He's a lieutenant. Maybe Helmeppo is a, uh, an ensign or something, right? They get word that Captain Morgan has been spotted on an island in the east. Helmeppo hears this information. It's like, my dad has been spotted. We've been looking for him, but we haven't really found him. And with everything else going on, he's not really, he hasn't made any, I mean, it's not like he was, a, he was attacking people or anything. So he didn't make a big deal, but he was spotted on this island. So they go to the island in the east, expecting that he's going to be like a warlord or like a, he's like killing people, like a serial killer or something. It turns out Morgan did not start a bakery. I'm not going to do that. But Morgan is living in the wilds of this one island. He built himself a log cabin with his own axe hand, and he's kind of living like Thanos did after he used the snap, right? That's kind of Morgan. He's just living out in the woods. He's hunting game. He's growing his own food. He built his own cabin, and every now and then he comes down to the village, and at one point, one of the villagers spotted him and knew who he was and radioed into the Marines, and then Helmeppo and Kobe arrive. And... It's kind of a question of, like, what do they do with this? He's not attacking anybody, and Morgan might be like, I've given all that up. I'm, I'm done with that shit. I'm done with it. You know, it's like, do they bring him in? Do they execute him? Probably not. Uh, but do they tell any other Marines about this, or do they just let him go? I think this would be the moment for Helmeppo. This would be Helmeppo's little mini arc. A good four or five chapters, folk. Maybe not four or five chapters, like two, three chapters. Focusing on Helmeppo, reuniting with his dad, and then just tying up that plot point. Because we never learned what happened with Morgan. I'm not going to have Morgan start like his, I will start the, the, the opposite Marines, the evil Marines. You know, that's, that's Zephyr's thing that does that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that, okay? He went out, and he's just living by himself. He's not bothering anyone. Has he redeemed his ways? He's still kind of an asshole, but he's not bothering anybody anymore. That's kind of the point, right? Maybe Morgan figured out, like, if, I, you know, I'm on the Marines, like, list now. If, if I get caught, they're just going to throw me in jail. So I'm just going to not bother anyone and be out here on my own, okay? And so maybe Helmeppo has to make the decision to be like, you know what? I'll just let you be here, Dad. Just let you just do whatever you want to do. And then they, they go back to the Marines, and Helmeppo is, like, uh, giving the report. And he's like, yeah, uh, there was a report that Captain Morgan was on this island. Yeah, we didn't find anybody. We didn't find anyone there. And it was like, oh, okay. It was, it was a mistake. It was somebody that had a really big axe, and they thought he was Axe Hand Morgan. I'm like, oh, okay. So it was like, yeah. And then maybe he lets him go. Who knows? And then we could tie up that little plot point. All right. So uh, that happens. Rocky Port happens. That's like maybe like a year or so into the time skip. Rocky Port arc happens. That's going to be a whole arc for Kobe and Helmeppo. Law is going to be involved in this. Wang Zhi, you bet your bottom dollar is going to be a character in my manga. Yeah, Wang Zhi is going to show up. He's like, I am the Lord of Hachino. So you're going to have a whole history backstory of Wang, everything he did, everything he is, you know, how he fights, all that. Blackbeard's going to show up. Oh, the Rocky Port arc is going to be insane. Law's going to be there. Kobe's going to be there punching out giant things. He's going to be saving civilians. It's going to be great, okay? We know a little bit about it, but not everything yet. And I guess it takes place on the Hachinosu. When the new admirals are recruited, so Kobe might meet Fujitora and Aramaki. By the way, we get to see Aramaki in the anime now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, damn, he looks, uh, look at those abs. Okay, anyway, so we're going to have that scene. That'll be cool, right? And then, um, then we kind of just cut away to the rest of the story into the, after the time skip. 
this is where I kind of just stopped writing stuff down because I felt like I had enough for a video. Oh, look, I do. And then some. Because at, at one point, I'm writing all this stuff down and I'm like, this is going to be like a three hour long video if I include the post time skip. And you're right. So, you know what? I might do a sequel to this. I might not. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. It was a lot to unpack, certainly, about Kobe. Um, but I like this. I like the idea of writing a whole manga from Kobe's perspective and what that would entail as he rises through the ranks. He learns about what it is to be a real Marine. He meets other people along the way. Some are friends. Some are rivals. You know, he, he loses someone he actually uh, cared about as a friend. You know, that kind of stuff makes him a genuine, bona fide, shonen protagonist. Damn it. All right, well, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a long one for sure, but I enjoyed it, and that's, that, 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 that's the thing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a long one to be certain, um, but, uh, hey, that's just how it goes when I go crazy with uh, my, my fanfics. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Tekking signing out. Later.